Lance Hicks is another typical Bob Purvis story. He's uh, down at Gravenhurst. His friend Herm Heisman, actually I think he talked Herm into buying it. Herm had, was fairly well off. Herm he knew from from uh, before the war. I think the Herm, 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 <laughs> Herm had been, uh, Herman had been at, at uh, UCC or somewhere else, got kicked out a number of times, ended up at Jarvis Collegiate, and my father uh, knew him from Jarvis Collegiate. But at any rate, Herm's family had this farm up in Thorn Hill, and um, when the war started, uh, they used to be able to get gasoline because it was rationed everywhere else, but farm, farms could get uh, gasoline. It had a purple dye in it, apparently, so you'd know when it was. So there was all these motorcycles around uh, Moore Park that had purple dye in the <laughs> stuff. Herm was a character, and uh, my father taught him to fly and that sort of thing. But he talked to Herm into buying Gravettes, and this was uh, before Bruce Wilson owned it. Would have been, I don't know how long Herm had it. Went to see Herm one day, and this boat came in. I guess it would have been Miss Sweeney traded it in on a, a Gravette inboard out. One of the first ones they did, that was a Flash, which were a nice little boat. They said, well, what's that boat doing here? So, oh, well, we just took it as a trade. We don't know what the hell to do with it. I said, well, what did you give her for it? Well, we gave her $1,500 for it. And says, we sell it? And, oh yeah, great. So he phones my mother and, Betty, get down here with a check. We're gonna buy the boat for $1,500. Oh, of course, I don't, I don't think there was $1,500 in any kind of bank account they had. So he calls Bob Quigley, his friend that uh, Ian knows was neighbor and fairly, very well, and he was a, he was a customer of my father's as well. Bob, you need a boat. You've got the, you've got an extra slip, and it's never it hasn't been filled. It's been sitting there empty for two years now. You need a boat. I found a great boat for us, for us, right? So Bob bought the boat, or <laughs> bought the boat. My father paid for half of it eventually, and it was sat over at Quigley's for two years. Then it uh, it came here, and uh, my father uh, bought the rest of the boat. This boathouse. The center part was a little slip that came over from Arthur Bay years ago, but then this a lean-to was put on this for the, the land's sake. Uh, Miss Sweeney was from Landlar. Uh, that family, was the boat was or built for them by the Bornemans. It was used very regularly as a, almost a utility boat in that it went shopping, it went and picked up people. It was, uh, it was a good boat. When we got it, it had a Kermath in it, which Ed tells me is, uh, was put in in the 40s. Uh, there was an engine, I, I think that might have been the third engine, there was an engine in it that was replaced the original, or may have been the original, but in the 30s, early 30s, there was a fire and the four decks were replaced. Otherwise, it's pretty much, certainly the cockpit's all original and the, the hardware and everything. The sides, I don't know if they've ever been done, they might be original too. I think it's the third bottom. We put a new bottom on 10 years ago. As you experience today, it's a bit tippy because it's a round sort of displacement uh, bottom. It's actually built quite similar to a canoe or a rowboat with ribs and chinked in copper <laughs> nails and that sort of thing, but uh, it's a lovely old boat, it's a fun boat. Doesn't go too quick. As Buddy and I used to say when we were going somewhere in it, uh, we'll be there, don't worry, we can only get 18 with the wind out of her. So <laughs> and the engine, uh, the engine it's now, the, the Kermath died. Uh, we were gonna put, we had another Kermath, we were gonna put the two of them together and we were told by a mechanic at the time who took them both apart that it wasn't worth it. And we ended up buying this Buchanan uh, through Dukes, who actually found it for us. And it turned out, uh, as we know, uh, as I think I related uh, a story about the Wanda, when uh, the uh, Conservancy was helping uh, raise funds for the Wanda, um, we had uh, John Eaton here, and he uh, came over with uh, Tim Chisholm, because he was staying at Tim's place. And uh, they were looking at the boat. They actually came over to see the fancy lady because Tim had the Black Knight, a sister ship. And he looked in here and he saw the engine. He said, my God, that's our engine. And he saw the, uh, an exhaust flange that was, uh, that was put on there, a big copper exhaust flange. He says, oh, we had, that, we had that done in 1957 or something like that for our, whatever it was, grew boat that went out to the island with us. So fun stories that we, that go back. And they interconnected, all these interconnected things in Muskoka, you know. But anyway, that's the story of the land sakes.